So I have a couple of questions. Ray, I wanted to start with you um, because you're fresh in my mind. Um, a, a lot of the stuff that you talked about was um, the library engaging with other libraries, um, media. What's the patron involvement like? Are people posting book faces back at you? Do you have people in your community who are like getting on board? What's that like? It, we actually did set up a display one time calling for people to check out books, do their own book faces. Um, unfortunately, there was none posted. But when we had the Berlin Game of Thrones thing out, people posted, people sat on the throne and then they used the hashtag. So it was, again, I think it's the medium that you're asking for. Um, in terms of the book faces, we have patrons waiting for our next book face. Oh, I can't wait for you to shoot. What are you gonna do next? And that's kind of what is my challenge is pushing the limit. How can I shoot another book face that's gonna top the next one? Um, Bryce, uh, the alt library, how did, I don't know a lot about the background of that. How, how do you get to you know, play with the things that you get to play with, it seems like, on a regular basis? Sure, so I was, I was lucky when I came on board at SPL because a lot of things were already in place. Um, so, uh, you know, I worked with, with Amy and Calm to, um, you know, we kind of niched out what we wanted everything to look like. And it was really uh, um, the, the, the thing that's, that's most valuable about that setup, I think, is that there aren't many checks and balances or anything like that. So it's just you have this third party platform and you can just go in and um, you know, post some kind of idea and then it's and then it's live. So I'm able to to go through ideas and get um, you know, feedback from the online community uh, quicker versus like having you know just having folks come into the library or doing traditional programs and everything. So we're able to cycle through more quickly. But it's really that structure that's valuable. And we spent probably was it a year? I think it may have taken a year to get all the branding and and everything. Um, hammered out, but now it's, you know, just takes a couple minutes to post something and um, try out new ideas. I know you guys have questions. Um, I actually have two questions um, for Amy or Bryce. Um, for your Meetup accounts, are you guys collecting statistics somehow? How are you gauging the success of Meetup and whether or not it's worth for a library to invest in? Uh, so good question. Um, so Meetup Pro does give you some more options with the analytics. Um, though even with the regular version, you can just track membership. So seeing that increase is uh, one metric. Also RSVPs show more engagement as do comments. Um, you know, I would say in terms of success, eventually you wanna convert people to be library users and multi-service users. So one of the things, um, the Alt Library one that I mentioned has done, sorry, not Alt Library, anything allowed, she looked at, that librarian looked at the interests of her members and saw travel was there. So she told them about our passport services and travel books at one of her events. Um, she, you know, she was able to see if they were interested in crafting or, um, you know, magazines or, or, or travel, you know. I already said travel, so <laughs> anyway. Um, that's a good question because I think it's not just any one metric because members, if people don't engage, aren't as valuable and, you know, if they don't convert to library users, it's not as valuable. So I would think that you would want to look at a couple different levels. And, Thank and you. you. And you had mentioned that um, the music event that, that you had, all of the people who came were non-traditional library users. How did, you, how did you gauge that? How did you capture that information? Oh, that's a great question. So um, that librarian did surveys with the people who came to that event since it was a, a new thing. So she was able to get feedback of how they heard about it and that it was all coming through Meetup and not their traditional, um, they were walking into the library or using the library website to hear. Sorry, I, th I think I got you off, sorry about that. 
And a lot of times, too, I'll ask um, folks that attend different on-ground workshops, you know, how they heard it. Some, some folks are, uh, you know, they're returning patrons. Uh, but every now and again, with a certain event, we'll get this influx of folks where, I, you know, I haven't seen them before. So I'll ask them, you know, how did you learn about the program? And um, so a lot of it is that word of mouth and, and you know, especially with different kind of artist um, communities and, you know, friend of a friend, and there. You know, we've done different things like um, cassette tape splicing and and stuff like that, where, um, you know, it's it's out there on the site, and then people may find out about it later on, and then they're like, oh, when is that going to happen again? And, you know, do you still have, you know, 400 cassette tapes at your desk or whatever it might be? So, <laughs> where do you store all the cassette tapes? So my That's second secret. question, um, I think Bryce, you touched on it very briefly about sort of reaching the elusive 20 to 30 something age group. Um, and I'm currently doing research about that, and I sort of want to know your experience. You know, do you feel that Meetup is actually a great way to sort of outreach to this age group? You know, are these members attending multiple events and coming back, or is it more of a one-off event? You don't really see them again. Like, how are you seeing this age group? So it's really, um, you know, there's a lot of different variables, and it depends on, um, you know, it depends on the, the content and what folks um, in the community, what their interests are. So certain things like, you know, if it's kind of more like music um, uh, and, you know, collaborative kind of creativity and everything, a lot of times that'll attract a different crowd than, say, you know, the fitness stuff. Um, and, and then we have people that, you know, just looking at technology and, you know, they don't have a Facebook account or anything like that because they don't want to be you know, they don't want to be friends with their mom or, <laughs> you know, so it's interesting to see how things change because what well, people that come to, and even, you know, even when we started using um, Meetup because it was something that, um, you know, I wasn't super familiar with, but then I was like, oh, Meetup is like, that's something that people are using like in the past and that's like done with, right? That's, but the way that we're um, going about with, you know, advertising on there and everything, it's something that has some new twists to it. So I think it um, creates more of a, maybe a, um, a spark with certain programs and everything, but I don't have a, a definite answer with, you know, connecting with, um, you know, overall the, those age groups. It seems like there's so many different kind of, you know, interests and almost like clicks. So you have like, you know, the, the folks that go to our board gaming event, well, anything with alcohol does well. But if you, <laughs> the folks that, you know, so board games and beers and everything. So, you know, a lot of things like that, it'll draw in a, a different crowd. And it's just, we're just putting out the, the information and creating the events and everything and tying it back to library services. And so it helps show kind of, um, you know, how, uh, you know, different our, our users are. So I think by going through and, and doing different types of programs and just doing them more quickly uh, and being experimental, uh, that's how you create more of a buzz and um, that's how you, you come across kind of interesting and exciting discoveries. And that's when you get like another library that calls you and be like, did you do this? Did this really happen? And it's like, you know, yeah. And then you can give little tips and everything. So actually if any of you ever have an idea that you think would be um, something that Alt Library could do that maybe your library can't do at the moment because there's certain restrictions and everything. Feel free to send us an email. You know, maybe we'll throw it out there and see what happens, and maybe it could turn into something. So you steal all our? our I think he's our advocating ideas. to steal. I think he wants our ideas. You know, it's, it's the, it, all it's, the things. I think he's it's asking the, you to give them send away. Send me ideas that you cannot do at your library, and I will We're, do them at mine. <laughs> He has no red tape. He can do whatever he Here's wants. Here's why Bryce is cooler than you. We're all on the same side, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> um, I, I, have a, I just have a comment uh, for Ray. Um, uh, well, Burlingame Library's uh, Instagram account, like, really, uh, it, it really influenced Los Gatos Library to start a, a strong uh, social media campaign. And um, so thank you for the inspiration. And... It's weird because you're like younger than me and I'm like fanboying out right now. I'm totally geeking <laughs> out because you do such a good job. Thank you. you thank you. I, the, the I totally appreciate that compliment. Of the, My okay, question right. is, is um, I'm really impressed by your stop motion videos. And so like what apps are you using for that? And what other kind of like, uh, like, um, inf like what other influences or what kind of like websites can we, um, can we um, look at to get influences on ideas? for social media? 
I highly suggest to answer the second part of your question is to follow Instagram themselves because they do a great job of highlighting accounts across the board. Um, and I got a lot of my inspiration from some of the posts that they post. In fact, every weekend they do what's called a weekend hashtag campaign where they encourage users to post something along a certain theme. Like I'm pretty sure Halloween's coming up, so they're gonna do something along the lines of a spooky post. Participate in it, look at the hashtag, and you'll see a lot of Instagram users posting some very creative stuff. Um, as far as the stop motion videos, most of them, if not all, are made through a simple free app. It's called iMotion. Um, that's one of the comments that I get a lot on our account is what did you use to make that and how did you make it? It's called iMotion. Um, there's a second app that you could get along with iMotion. It's called iMotion Remote. Basically, you take individual pictures and then the app stitches them together. But just the act of pressing your phone creates a little camera shake. So this secondary app called uh, iMotion Remote, you could use a second device to actually take the pictures so then you have your phone staying still. Um, and my setup for my phone is simply a lamp taped to a, or a selfie stick taped to a lamp so then my camera stays or my phone stays still while I take the pictures and usually just have a white poster board as the, the bottom just to make it look crisp. Is that the industry standard, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. <laughs> that actually, um, you guys have all been talking about kind of ways that you discover things and I, I wanted to ask Nicole and Angela how, like, how do you come across the fads or trends or trads or fans that you um, are we're sort of talking about? I'm I'm just not that cool. Where do you where do you get these things? Well, I think a lot of it is inherent to being teen librarians too, because we're both we're both uh, teen librarians, and even when you don't want them to talk to you about things, <laughs> they talk to you about things. And um, I think it's uh, really helpful to make yourself available to them. I know a lot of time, like most libraries have a teen area. I know when they're there, I'm just like walking around, just chit-chatting with them. They're usually on their phone. I'm like, ooh, what, what are you playing over there? Or it really just happens a lot with conversation. Um, I have family members that are that age, so that helps too. I kind of tap them for information. Um, my own kids are only three and seven, so they don't really give me much of anything. Um, <laughs> at least not yet. What I mean, they, they give for? me something, but they don't, they don't give me helpful or useful information. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I, I'm really, you know, get connected with your, uh, for me, it's the teen group. I think being a teen librarian is inherent with keeping up with the things that are going on right now. Angela? Yeah, I've never down, I'm like playing this really addictive game that I'll play for the next week because of them. Um, additionally, if you've seen the video about pineapple pen, that's something where you're like, what's pineapple pen? In like three weeks, it's going to be all over Facebook. And you'll be like, oh, I wish I was on that. They're with it for the whole fad stage, and then once it gets to their parents' accounts, it's not cool. So I hang out with them a lot. Also, the internet. Like, I saw Alt Library meetup group last year, and I was like, oh, we got to steal this idea and not tell them about it, and it'll be ours. And um, we were waiting to hire our adult services librarian to come in. I was like, the first thing before she got hired, I sent her a link to Alt Library. I was like, we need to do this. Um, so the internet. I steal many, I don't know if you saw my meme presentation, I steal a lot of things from the internet. <laughs> All the things. I think we have uh, time for one more question. Somebody's holding There's the mic like, out there. I've got the mic. Just, oh. She has a mic. Is this on? Can you hear me? Mm -mm. Yes. I was, no. um, quickly for Ray, uh, what percentage of your time is spent dedicated to the, pin, uh, the Instagram account? Don't tell my supervisor this, but no, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I would say I had to give her a ballpark figure um, not too long ago, and I said about an hour of time a week, um, only because now I, I got a promotion, so I'm doing supervision, so I can't spend too much time um, creating content. Whereas in my previous position, you know, I had set tasks, and I would run through them each day just so, so I could get to, to some time to, to create some videos or to shoot a book face. Um, 
it varies. It, it's hard to say. Sometimes a, a book face will take me five minutes to shoot. Other times it'll take me 15 minutes to shoot. A stop motion video, initially when I started doing stop motion, I just have all these supplies and not have a game plan and just shoot. But now I have a vision. I sometimes even storyboard stuff. So then when I get to actual shooting of it, it it's actually relatively quick. All right. So um, I hate to cut this off because it's a really good discussion. Um, we are going to have kind of a meet and greet uh, activity after the event.